Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. So today we will be starting with our ethics lectures, starting from the first unit, ethics and human interface. So let's get into the subject. In this video, we will be looking about the introduction of ethics, sources of ethics, importance of ethics, consequences due to absence of ethics, essence of ethics, and finally the challenges or issues in ethics. So without further delay, let's directly get into the topic. Let's begin with the introduction of ethics. So what is ethics? In ethics as a discipline is a discipline which is considered with what is morally good and bad and morally right and wrong. So let's keep it simple. Ethics differentiates what is good and what is bad. Okay. For example, for a positive note, let's take the few values such as moral, honesty, fairness, responsibility. These are positive, positive, morally right ones. For the morally negative ones, let's take it as nepotism, Mm, red tapeism, terrorism, these are all negative ones. So, ethics as a discipline helps with in differentiating what is good and what is bad. So, now let's get into the sources of ethics. So, with respect to the sources of ethics, there are a lot of ones. Starting from friends, family, fellow workers, religion, society, profession, everything brings in an impact. But the major five are family, society, religion, legal, and finally human rights along with international standards. So let's look into quite deeper in those important five sources of ethics. Family. So the family and the kinship relations play a vital role in shaping the individuals and social ethics. Okay, so a child grows from the home. The parents bring in the ethics. The child follows the parents. Child follows what their parents do. That's what. That's how the ethics grow of a child. Of a child. So, for example. Uh, Let's take into consider that uh, all re major religions of the world teach us to respect the nature. Nature. So, to respect the nature, to have that idea, that thought must be first implemented to the child by their parents. Only then, that child will slowly grow up with that thought, and eventually, he will, he or she might not harm the nature. Next, coming to society. So, society is the next bigger sphere where individual grows up and brings in different impacts uh, on the society. Different ethics, different morals come into an individual when he or she mingles with the society. Ethics in a society can be unique or general. Unique to society or general on the whole. For example, in Indian society, children are taught to get the blessings of elders whenever we meet them. But in the American society, that ethics is not highly followed, not much followed. So this shows that it is unique, unique in two different societies. So next comes religion. Religion and spiritual traditions along with the divine teachings provide the moral principles. This really helps the persons to determine what is right and what is wrong. For example, in Christianity, the Ten Commandments act as a set of ethical guidelines which are considered sacred by the Christian people. So this is something religion has an impact on everyone in in all the religions. Next is legal. Legal frameworks decide what is acceptable and what is not acceptable in a society. So they provide ethical principles 
and accountability to the society which is reflected by laws and regulations example can be taken as the indian constitution uh, articles 14 to 18 which enshrine the right to equality as a fundamental right so coming to the last one the human rights and the international standards ever since the formation of un various declaration conventions and international agreements on human rights were established to bring in the basic human rights of an individual the international convention on the elimination of all forms of discrimination is an example for the convention taking another example in, in this aspect the concept of lgbtq was majorly considered unethical earlier but as the society got progressed it is no longer considered unethical in most of the societies now continuing with the lecture let's get into the importance of ethics so ethics provides various importance gives us much importance for a human being or social being as well so what it does it provides a moral map making us to travel through difficult times now what it does is so all each and every person gets difficult times in their life at least few times okay so in those instances you have to find a moral map okay ethics helps with that and it will really help you travel through the difficult times so an ethical person will not only think for his own but also for the people around him so that's what it says ensuring individual as well as social good free from bias and prejudices a civil servant who takes action um must not uh consider any bias against any community or stakeholder and take take decision so ethics will help the civil servant to be free from bias and prejudices and effective decision making a uh, ethical person an effective civil ethical civil servant will take effective decision based on on considering different aspects of an issue or dilemma or whatever it may be next is helps to resolve moral issue so and a civil servant again gets a lot of issues to handle so the ethics will help him or her to think rationally and helps in the elimination of confusion and clarify the issue to bring in feasible solutions so continuing on continuing on to with that let's get into much deeper in the importance of ethics so there are a lot of points like importance of ethics at personal level at organization level and at social level so let's start with the personal level honesty so honesty is nothing but foundation for trust and is a key in the social relationships so it helps in the decision making process and gives us hope confidence etc etc one example which one example which could be cited here is tn shashan an ias officer who is credited for bringing significant electoral reforms in india during his tenure as a chief election commissioner so his honesty brought such changes made him bring such changes for the benefit of the democracy during elections next comes integrity integrity is nothing but upholding the moral principles in any situation both in and out of the workplace so that is very important for a society and again here example can be cited as mr sagayam is who is the first civil servant to make his assets public and fight corruption wherever he goes so this is these are some examples which you can use in your answer writing too following a following is a selflessness so selflessness is nothing but putting others first 
more than you considering needs and situation of others and prioritizing their uh, their needs before your own a vital example which can be said as mr armstrong pami is is officer who constructed the 100 km road in the underdeveloped area of manipur hills the most important thing was it was done without the help from government this is something which is remarkable uh, and shows the selflessness character next comes self confidence um self confidence is nothing about it is it means you accept and trust yourself and have a control in your life you know your strengths and weakness and always try to keep yourself positive um yeah example can be cited as dr b r ambedkar who resigned as a law minister from the cabinet of mr jawaharlal nehru former prime minister when the government refused to back the reformist hindu code bill so he had his confidence and thus resigned from the cabinet uh, coming to his next the responsibility a person with strong moral code of conduct will take responsibility for the actions and make changes or amendments whenever necessary this is something an civil servant must have in their action next is probity probity is nothing but adhering to the standards of integrity transparency and honesty so it tries to avoid improper practices and minimize the conflict an example could be said by strong action by ias officer durga shakti nagpal against the land scam and sand mafia racket in uttar pradesh is a real example real life example of property coming to the next is the at the organization level increase in the public faith public faith in of, of an organization increases only because of their ethical practices and having core principles which shows their social and economic mandates an example could be said as the election commission of india the tata groups uh, yeah they ha- all have built their trust public faith has increased in those um, groups because of their eminent values which they have shown in the past decades next comes the transparency transparency um, is a must in a democracy the flow of information is the foundation of a transparency so rti right to information act shows how transparency can increase or how the society progresses along with other developing countries nations cities or whatever it may call it next is effective decision making so an organization which has high ethics makes the decision that are just right for the organization or even the government and definitely considers both personal and societal interest it will never ever take a decision leaving one staker stakeholder away so this is something very important we consider to an organization level next coming to the social level trust building this is very important in society an individual must believe in the other individuals for their development so this is needed for a healthy relationship for example i mean this may look like a quite different example but still it makes um shani siknapur we know as the safest village in india is famous for the fact that there there is no house in the village so it is because of the trust building building between the commun- community so this shows the impact next is social cohesion and harmony so ethical behavior contributes to social cohesion by promoting actions that consider welfare of others and community this brings in more harmonious society example india is an example 
respect for diversity in india has enabled to be called india as unity in diversity so next comes brotherhood when we all respect others perspectives and do not involve in conflict with others the feeling of brotherhood rises in the society an example here stands the village of badekira in haryana fatehabad where no fir has ever been registered and has sta- and stands out as an extraordinary embodiment of solidarity and brotherhood next is social capital um it is a network of relationship where people who live and work in particular society enable that society to function it properly a vital example is bhutan a country where the environmental sustainability is both primary objective and starting point for the national development so this is something a major impact at the social at the society level next let's delve into our dive into the consequences due to absence of ethics so again here we divide into three individual level organization level and society level at the individual level we can look at your abuse domestic violence casteism selfishness cheating biasness discrimination envy jealousy uh, these all affect the inner self um example again capital capitalist system is stranded by greed for more money power wealth etc etc so this can be stated as an example coming to the organization level acceptance of corruption increased materialism violence gender crimes criminalization of politics abuse of power red taping favoritism all these comes under the absence of ethics at the organization level again let's bring it to the example in the 2019 lok sabha elections around 159 mps had declared serious criminal cases against them including cases of rape murder kidnapping and crimes against women that is something serious that brings in acceptance of corruption violence gender crime criminalization of politics everything comes at the organizational level and another example we could cite here is the former president of sri lanka mr mahinda rajapakshe has been accused of nepotism um, appointing three brothers to run important ministries and giving out other political position to the relatives regardless of their merit that is something as an organization as a ministry it does not work well coming next to the society level cease fire violations cross border terrorism communal conflict tax havens illegal mining depletion of natural resources organized crimes human trafficking these all keep on happening happening in the society even today but that's not how it works there have been many examples to deal with that for example during the world war the nazi did not show respect for any other nations and thus we saw gross violation of human rights and high war crimes and again the recent past during the delhi riots of 2020 mass looting of shops were seen this shows communal conflict cross fire violations and stuff like that so these things should be clearly avoided next coming into the essence of ethics so essence is nothing but the intrinsic quality of something that determines its character essence of ethics refers to the features significance and the intrinsic features characters and intrinsic features along with this characteristics so ethics defines what is good what is bad it must be noted that ethics cannot be shaped and sustained in isolation only when we mingle with other people in a beat in a family in a society in a religion or in a legal framework or an in international standard 
ethics will be shaped it cannot sustain in isolation balancing conflict ethics always recognizes the competing interests and values and demands and helps in balancing the conflicts and to give a justifiable course of action next is ethical leadership ethics always brings in the role of ethical leadership okay it helps in guiding the individuals in or organization here we can take examples of mr ratan tata mahatma gandhi subhash chandra bose a lot of people apj abdul kalam a lot of people can be taken into as example who inspired others to follow their path so next let's dive into the challenges or issues in ethics so again we divide here into at personal level social level and organizational level so at personal level we bring in the first non universalism and real relativity so non universalism is something like it is not universally present but present in only one point one type of society for example um, jainism believes in vegetarian vegetarianism but islam or christianity does not suggest that so this is a challenge next is relativity personal ethics are often subjected to the relativity of time and place and cannot be applied everywhere here again we can take into consideration of two countries united states of america and china where in usa free speech is considered a sign non cure whereas in china it can restrict the freedom of speech in the national interest next comes the social level social diversity communal conflict and majoritarianism social diversity is nothing but ethics are relative to social societies as well um certain ethics can be acceptable to society but it cannot be acceptable to other part of society and it can cause some trouble cause some disturbances to the entire society as a whole for example uh, certain african tribes believe in killing as justice for crimes but in the current scenario not many countries follow this aspect they have due punishment but killing is, is the least which is given next comes the communal conflicts different religion ethics may of often come in clash with each other and may cause conflicts here yeah. example issue of mob lynching in india next comes the majoritarianism okay this is something like Uh, ethical value which is forcibly imposed on uh, certain minority groups um, we can take into example as the uh, islamic republic of pakistan where it is unethical for muslims to consume alcohol but it is also been imposed on hindus and sikhs of pakistan uh, to to not consume alcohol um, unless with a special license so this is a majoritarianism being pushed on the minorities next coming to the organization level new modes of governance and market based reform so it must be noted that new models of governance keep on developing and they always um, rectify the old ones so in traditional organizations as an, as an example in traditional organization hierarchy was followed very strictly but the new modern system favors more participative mode of decision making rather than the hierarchy based so next one is market based reforms so markets always tend to replace the age old ethics which favor the traditionalist socialist ethics so here capitalism can come as an example because capitalism has encouraged for more profit seeking nature and has neglected the qual uh, concept of equality and welfare so this can be uh, a challenge and issue in ethics 
so that's it for today's video hope you guys understood the topic concepts if you guys have any doubts please um, post it in the comments which will be rectified in the further videos um, it is to be also noted that the notes of these topics along with uh, the uh, ppts will be posted in the groups uh, as time permits so kindly support the channel and keep subscribing thank you